Good morning, everyone. It is Thursday morning, the 18th of February, and we're going to come together and read um, the next part of John chapter 1, verses 19 down to 34. So let's read God's word together. This was John's testimony when the Jewish leaders sent priests and temple assistants from Jerusalem to ask John, who are you? He came right out and said, I am not the Messiah. Well then, who are you? They asked, are you Elijah? No, he replied. Are you the prophet we are expecting? No. Then who are you? We need an answer for those who sent us. What do you have to say about yourself? John replied in the words of the prophet Isaiah. I am a voice shouting in the wilderness, clear the way for the Lord's coming. Then the Pharisees who had been sent asked him, if you aren't the Messiah or Elijah or the prophet, what right do you have to baptise? John told him, I baptise with water, but right here in the crowd is someone you do not recognise. Though his ministry follows mine, I am not even worthy to be his slave and untie the straps of his sandal. This encounter took place in Bethany, an area east of the Jordan River where John was baptising. The next day John saw Jesus coming towards him and said, Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. He is the one I was talking about whenever I said, A man is coming after me who is far greater than I am, for he existed long before me. I did not recognise him as the Messiah, but I have been baptising with water so that he might be revealed to Israel. Then John testified, I saw the Holy Spirit descending like a dove from heaven and resting upon him. I didn't know he was the one, but when God sent me to baptise with water, he told me, the one on whom you see the Spirit descend and rest is the one who will baptise with the Holy Spirit. I saw this happen to Jesus, so I testified that he is the chosen one of God. Amen. It's interesting when we start to read and hear about John the Baptist and we hear a little bit about him in the gospel and we hear about him and pick up different bits from other parts of the gospel. Gospels. It's interesting because people at first are confused thinking that, well, because he's baptising, because he's in this river, is he um, the Messiah? Is he the promised prophet? Uh, John knows he's not and John declares that he's not. But John is part of of what God is doing. God uses John uh, to declare who Jesus is. And God tells him very clearly, whenever you see the Holy Spirit coming down and settling on somebody, you know that's the Messiah. So God chooses to use John. John's a bit of an oddball. Um, As he's growing up, he's, he's eating honey and wild locusts. He's running around in funny clothes. He's kind of shunned to the side. He's, he's nearly like an outcast from society. And yet that's who God chooses to use to announce the coming of Jesus. Maybe at times we feel like outcasts. We feel like we have no worth to give. We feel like, why would anyone be interested in us? Look at all how little I can do. I'm I'm useless. And yet God has a plan for each and every one of us. He wants us all to be involved in what he is doing. And we have a role to play. I wonder if you've ever thought of it that way. That God has designed a role for you. Now, we all know God doesn't need us to carry out his will. He can, he can do it without us. But because of the love which he has for us, he wants us to be involved. Like we said yesterday... All the way along, God has always had the perfect plan in place for salvation. And God also has a plan in place for us and for our lives. The question is, do we want to get involved? For John, in the end, it ultimately costs him his life. He gives up everything uh, because he knows that he's doing what God has told, called him to do. Uh, and, and he's a great blessing to others. He has the great privilege of baptising Jesus He sees so many things happening. That's the joy for us whenever we get involved with God. Um, Whenever we get involved in his plan. We'll see things that we would never believe. We get involved in things that we thought we would never have an opportunity to be involved with. God includes us 
because of how much he loves us and cares for us. It's just an amazing start to an incredible story about Jesus. And right at the very beginning, God wants us to be involved. Yep, you can be involved right now uh, as we read and as we follow this through uh, for Lent. But you can be more involved by, first of all, giving your life to Christ and then letting him lead you and guide you and direct you and seeing what amazing things he wants to do with you. Will you let him? Let's pray. Father, your servant John had an incredible journey. He was involved in so much and he saw so much. We know you want the same for us, to be involved in your work. And for all of us, it's different, Father, what that involvement means. But it's an amazing that you want to do that with us. Lord, please just open our eyes to the plan that you have for us and help us to follow you. Lord, thank you for this day that we have. Thank you for an opportunity that we have today to support the work of our local food bank and the, and the work of Women's Aid as we bring gifts to them. Lord, we ask that as these gifts come in today, this morning and this evening, that you would take them and use them and that they would be a blessing to the people who receive them, that they'd be a blessing in your name. So Lord, thank you so much. And continue with us this day, we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Thanks, folks, for joining in this morning. Um, trust that you do know God's blessing today. Uh, if you are planning on coming down to do to drop anything off in church, please remember, um, make it an essential journey. Please stay safe and keep your social distance. Um, the car park will be open from 10 until 12 before you can drop off. Or if you can't make it this morning, you want to come tonight, car park's open again and the church from 7 till 8 to drop off then. But in the meantime, take care. God bless. See you tomorrow.